this resource looks at vectors and arrays. The previous video then demonstrated how to use basic BODMAS functionality and it was looking um, at MATLAB and BODMAS. Here we're going to consider slightly more advanced problem solving and there there's often a requirement to repeat that's the keyword to repeat the same computation on a number of different variables and what you don't want to have to do is to write the same command 50 times or 100 times or a million times or whatever. So for example how would you form a plot of y equals f of x in the domain 1 minus 1 less than x less than 4? In principle you would calculate f of x at a number of different values of x so that means you're doing the same computation a number of different times and on the calculator that would certainly be tedious. Now MATLAB supports a vector array notation to make handling these computations much easier. So first of all we need to know what the notation is. We're going to start by looking at row arrays. So what MATLAB does is it uses square brackets and commas to store a set of numbers in a single variable on a row. So here you can see the example Here's the MATLAB command, v equals square brackets, 1, comma, minus 3, comma, 2, comma, 5, comma, 67, comma, minus 2. So the commas are used to separate the numbers, and a comma tells MATLAB I'm dealing with a row. So that's what the comma is, it tells MATLAB I'm dealing with a row. And you'll see MATLAB has now put all these values into a single variable name, v. Now, there were six values, and so v is a 1 by 6 array. 1 by 6 because there's one row and six columns. And you'll notice if you ask MATLAB using this who's v, um, what size is v, you'll see it tells you it's 1 by 6, one row, six columns. You can also store variables in a column array. Now, in order to define a column array, MATLAB uses again square brackets, same as before, but now it uses semicolons. So here you can see I've put semicolons between the variables, and what those semicolons tell MATLAB is I'm making a column. So every time you get to a semicolon, it says go to a new row. So here you can see V is now a 6 by 1 array because it's got 6 rows and 1 column. How about forming sketches of simple functions? So the MATLAB function commands such as sine, cosine, log and so far support data entry in array form so you can do computations much more efficiently. So here you'll see I've defined an array V which has got a number of terms here, I think it's got seven terms, and if I want to find the sine of each of those terms, I only need to write one command, y equals sine v, and the sine of 0 goes here, the sine of 0 0.2 goes here, the sine of 0 0.4 here, sine of 0 0.6, and so on. So you see a single command, and I've done seven computations, so it's very, very efficient. Now the MATLAB function plot, which you can use to plot things, will give a plot of, and here's the key point, two arrays. So it assumes that you've got two arrays to start with, and it assumes that both arrays are the same length. So here, you'll see it's the same as on the previous window. I've defined my v, and then I've done y equals sine v, so I've now got two variables, v and y, and then I've just gone plot v comma y. So you can see v and y are both the same length, the same size. They're both one row, seven columns. And when I do this command, I get the plot. And what you'll notice is this term here, naught naught, corresponds to naught there and naught there. The next value here corresponds, there's the y value, and there's the horizontal coordinate value. And so what it does is it basically does v1, y1 as a coordinate, v2, y2 as a coordinate, all the way up to, I think, v, I've said 6 here, I think there were 7 terms, wasn't there? 
In practice, we might want 50 to 100 values to form a plot, and this would be quite tedious to enter by hands if we had to enter all the different values. So MATLAB provides a shortcut, and here's the shortcut, which is really, really useful. So what that shortcut says is this. Take a lower value of x given as minus 1, take an upper value of x given as 2, and give me 10 values starting from minus 1 and finishing at 2. And so you'll notice here, that's what MATLAB's done, is given me 10 values equispaced with the lowest minus 1 and the highest 2. So it's given me an array which is 1 by 10. So that's a shortcut for forming some domain values, should you need them. Now, of course, in general, you might want lots more values. So, for example, here I'm doing a lower limit of 1, an upper limit of 8, and I want a 1,000 values because that gives me a very nice plot. And you can see here, lower value of x, upper value of x, a 1,000 values. And then I've calculated my output values with a single statement, y equals sine, 1.2 times x, and then I've said plot. And there's the plot of your sine curve. 1.2x between minus 1 and 8. And the key thing to note is how quick and easy it is to do this. Three lines, and I've calculated a 1,000 values and produced a plot. What about accessing the values? So you say, oh, I've got these vectors. How do I get the values inside them? Well, the notation is rather obvious. You use this notation here, x brackets i, where i is the index. So x here has got five values. If I want the value in the second position, I just write x brackets 2. And you'll see clearly the second position is 3. That's what I've got. If I want the value in the fifth position, well, the fifth position is minus 4. So I just write x brackets 5, and I will get the fifth position. Now, MATLAB has a shortcut to find the last value in a, an array, and that can be useful when you don't actually know how long the array is. And there will be times when you're doing problem solving where that happens. You're given vectors and arrays, and you don't know how long they are, but you want the last value. So the shortcut is very simple. You write brackets end. So go, take me right to the end. So here, you can see what x is, so I can demonstrate it works. And if I put x brackets end, what it does is it says I want the last value. And there you see, you get the last value. If I say y end, then you can see y is defined here using this lin space. So y end is clearly that 3, and that's what it's given me. So y here had 2,024 values. I didn't need to know that. I just wrote y end, and it gives me the last value. Now, switching off the display. When a vector has a large number of terms, you really don't want to display it on the screen. So here, I did the command f equals 0 to 100, which gives me 100 values. And you can see what's happened to your screen. It's absolutely flooded with numbers. And you might say, oh, golly, that's not helpful. If you want to switch off the display, what you do is you use a semicolon at the end of the command. So here, you'll notice I've done the same command, f equals 0, 100, but what you notice, I put a semicolon at the end and nothing has happened, no display. So it's calculated f, but it hasn't flooded the screen with the answer. So I've got f there if I need it, um, but it's not using up my screen. So some live demonstrations then, so you can see some of these vector array operations in practice. So go to the window, we'll generate some blank space so we can see where we are. So go to the top, you can see simple vector array. So if I tap that command there, V, you can see it's got seven values and it's put them in a row vector for me. And that's used commas, so I've got a row vector. This next command is used semicolons. You see there's four values, so it's given me a column vector with four rows. This next one, now, what I've done here is shown you an alternative. You'll see I've put vec D and I've put, it's got quite a few values here, but the key thing is I've neither used a comma or a semicolon. Instead, I've used a space. And MATLAB allows you to use spaces instead of commas. So this is giving you a row again. But I would suggest that you very careful when you use spaces because it's not always clear. So I tend to recommend you use commas. And I can get a longer column. There it is. 
Right, automated entry for long arrays. Now you want to hold on to your hat for this one. You'll see I'm going to do lin space minus two three five hundred. So it's going to give me five hundred values. And what's happened to your screen? You can see, look, your screen is absolutely flooded, and anything you had before has been washed away, and you can't see it because it's displayed 500 values. What about this next one? XX, I'm now going to ask for 200 values and run it, but look what's happened. No display because at the end I put the semicolon. So XX still exists. You can see this if I go who's XX, it's defined it. There it is, it's 1 by 200. I can check the values, xx of 1, minus 1, as I expected, xx of end, 6, as I expected. So all the values are there, but it hasn't flooded the screen because I put in this semicolon. And another example here, I'm going to calculate the cosine um, of 3 times x. And you'll see I've used the semicolon not to flood the screen. If I want the value at the 255th position, I've got this command here, and you can see I've said what's x at 225, and what's y at 225, and put those in an array, which I've called x, y at 255 position. And you can see there are the two answers. And similarly here, I've defined a t as being sine 2 times xx, again with a semicolon, and if I want those at position 23, there's the command xx23, y23, and here are the answers. Now, if you want to get the last value, you can do things like this. Last value of t is t end. And there you can see it's minus 0.5366. And if I want the penultimate value, there's an interesting one, I can use end minus 1. So that's quite nice. Um, that end is quite useful. It, MATLAB automatically works out what the last index is, and n minus 1 will therefore be the penultimate index. And of course, once I've got all these things in vectors or arrays, I can now plot them. So I can plot x against cos 3 times x. They're clearly the same length. Or xx against sine 2 times xx. They're clearly the same length. So I run those two commands. And your plot window is hidden. There it is. And you can see it's done it for me. It's plotted that blue curve, which was the cosine of 3x and the red curve, which was the sign of 2x. There's more on plotting in a later video. So conclusions. We've demonstrated the vector array notation in MATLAB. It allows efficiency of computation and data storage. That's key. So the same function can be executed on many different values using a single command. So you'll see we wrote things like y equals sine x, and it did it for lots of different values of x just with the one command. Now this is quite good when you want to do plotting, and we'll get to plotting later. It's easy to extract specific values as required, so if you want the 53rd value, you just write x brackets 53, for example. Now the final thing is, users are recommended, in general, to finish your commands with a semicolon, because that will prevent flooding of the command window with the data output. Sometimes you want to see the output and you won't put the semicolon, but once your variables get to 20, 30, 40, 50 values, then you probably want to use the semicolon all the time.